Hello and welcome to the Dundas Dashboard tutorial series. In this video, Terminology, we'll be learning the terms that will be used throughout the remainder of the tutorial series. With regard to the platform and the three layers that are involved in developing dashboards, your data sources, our platform, Dundas Dashboard, and your users' viewing devices, there are a few terms that you'll need to know. When we refer to the application, we're talking about Dundas Dashboard. This is a web application that runs on your Microsoft web server and is exposed through IIS. You'll learn about administrating this application in Section 14. In addition to the web application, there are two small databases that live on SQL Server that are required to operate the platform. The first is the data store. This database contains all of the configuration settings of your application, as well as all of the objects you create in Dundas Dashboard. This includes your data connections, your virtual tables and cubes, which you'll learn about later, your KPIs, and of course, your dashboards. In addition, there's another database on SQL Server, which we call the Sync Database. And this comes into play if you decide to turn on caching, which again, we'll talk about a little later. And finally, there's the viewer, and when we use the term viewer, we refer to the container in which dashboards are rendered on your clients' machines, their desktops, their smartphones, etc. Now, there are a number of different viewers in different technologies. Dundas can also be embedded in, in a .NET and non.NET applications, but collectively these are referred to as a viewer, and you'll learn more about these in section 15. With regard to the workflow, which you'll discover later in this section of the tutorial series, there are four steps involved in the creation of dashboards inside the application. They are creating data connectors, creating a virtual layer, creating KPIs and data sets, and finally designing dashboards. There are terms involved in each of these phases. With regard to the data connector, a, a data connector itself is a construct inside Dundas Dashboard that's used to connect your data and extract the schema. And you'll learn all about these in section two. But basically, these are named connections to your providers that Dundas can then reference again and again and say, I know where this data lives, I know how to access it, and then allow your, your developers to build dashboards on top of it. The provider is simply the, the data source you're, you're connecting to. You'll need to know its name, where it lives, and all of the appropriate access credentials to, to get at the information inside the provider. And as I mentioned, there is optional caching of your data provider. So if you're looking to improve performance by storing data either locally or on the server or inside the sync database, these are all flavors of caching that you'll learn about in, in section two. Now the virtual layer is an abstraction layer between your data sources and dashboards. So this is where you start narrowing down all of the data available in your data provider down to what's going to be relevant for dashboard creation. Uh, these come in, in two different types. There's a virtual table, which you'll put on top of relational and flat file data sources. You'll learn about these in section three. And virtual cubes, which go on top if you have an OLAP provider, and you'll learn about these in section four. Now this is a, a mandatory step, as you learn about in the workflow, that you, you need to put a virtual layer on top of your data connection so that you can then go on to create KPIs and data sets. KPIs, this is a named term in Dundas. This is a specific data con construct, and this is something that has one metric and multiple dimensions. So sales over time, calls per region. You're going to be building KPIs so that you can then visualize them. You'll learn about those in section six. In contrast, there are data sets. So this is just a tabular group of data with multiple columns that can be in any format. And these are used in things like maps and tables, etc. You'll learn about those in section seven. So for anything you want to put on a dashboard, you're going to need to build either a KPI or a data set on top of a virtual layer that is built on top of a data connector. So those are the terms that refer to the, the logical constructs in Dundas. Terms that come into play when you're designing are dimensions. So if your KPI and data set, if there's a structure you want to continue to navigate through, this will be put into a dimension. So a hierarchy you want to reuse over and over. You'll define a dimension so that your KPIs and data set can reference it. And then this dimension can be used on the dashboard to do filtering and ag aggregation, etc. You'll learn about these in section five. With regard to the design environment, which we'll show you a little later, there are a few terms you'll need to know. First of all, the designer. And this is the, the actual visual design environment for creating dashboards. You'll learn about how to use this in section eight. 
dashboards come in two flavors. You'll, you'll be choosing one of these to build when you open up the designer. One of them will be a performance dashboard, and this is what most dashboards end up looking like. It's a decision support tool filled with charts and gauges and tables, and you'll learn how to create these in section 9. As opposed to a, an analytical dashboard, if you have an OLAP data source, you can put a cube browser on top of that OLAP data source and allow your users to get in, slice and dice. This is called an analytical dashboard, which you'll learn about in section 12. A few other things that you can use while you're designing a dashboard. Uh, you'll need to understand what a data control is. So this is a container on the dashboard that displays data. If you're going to be building a chart or a map or a gauge, you're going to be using a data control and putting a KPI inside that data control. You learn how to do this in section 9. There's also general controls. These are non-data elements for providing context, labels, and shapes, and frames. They'll be touched on briefly in section 9. A parameter. So if you have created a dimension or you're looking to filter any other KPI without a dimension, you'll need to create a parameter. And this is something that is put on a dashboard during the design and can be used by the user for filtering. You'll learn about how to use these in section 10. Interactions. Everything on a dashboard is listening for a user to do something. And those somethings are collectively referred to as interactions. Drill downs, pop ups, hover overs, navigating to different dashboards. You'll learn how to set up these interactions in section 11. And finally, for more advanced users, there is the Dundas script engine. So if you want to go further than our, our basic containers and interactions allow you to, there is a C-sharp based engine built directly into the environment that's used for creating advanced interactions. And you'll be touching on this in section 13. Those are the general terms you'll be hearing throughout this series. For more information on our training program, you can email us at training.dundas.com or to look up any of the technical terms I've used in this video, you can visit us at support.dundas.com. Thank you.